Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Most turners know that you can turn a bowl from a green piece of wood directly from a tree, but few know that you can also turn spindles from such wood. The Windsor chair makers did this exclusively. They would split billets out of a log like this and then turn their spindles. Yes, it would shrink a little and the piece would be oval when you were finished, but didn't matter. They made a great chair out of it. Windsor chairs were sort of a cross between woodsmanship and furniture making. They were the first inexpensive seating in the world and they were made by the thousands. Windsor chairs put together in the 1700s are still going fine today. So let's look at how we can rive, and that's the term here. We're going to split this piece of log that we bucked. Buck means that we cut, cross cut it to a length of about 20 inches, is right for most legs. The process of riving, we will split this into smaller and smaller pieces until we end up with billets about the size we need. A very important aspect of riving that is that you need to split equal masses. So I will put this wedge in here and take my hammer and tap it down in place. And I will split this in half. I will then split it into quarters. I'll split those quarters into eighths. And then I'll start splitting it up in equal pieces. It is very important that you split equal masses because as you drive this wedge in, if you drive it off center and you have a lighter piece on one side and a heavier piece on the other, the split will walk to the lighter side. It's action reaction. Place the second wedge. And there we go. Okay, we've got it split in half. We're now take our wedge and split this into quarters. We'll split this in half to get eighths. Always equal masses. Now we can divide this piece in half. Now I'm going to have a little lighter piece here than there, so the split is going to walk to the lighter side, but that's okay, there's some taper in the leg, we'll get enough for a leg. Our forefathers would often do the job from here with what's called a fro, which is kind of like a draw knife and a wedge put together, but they would just drive that right down in there like that. You can now pry with that and split those right in two. So there's another leg and we could split this in half. Got a couple more legs or stretchers or whatever. So let's go into the lathe and turn these into legs. Before they proceeded to the lathe, our forefathers would have taken the billets we just split out in the yard to a shave horse and used a draw knife to knock all these corners off and get it basically round. They were using human powered lathes, a pole lathe. So this extra work saved them a lot of time in the long run. We can skip that step if we want to and just use a big spindle roughing out gouge.
All right, I'm having a little diameter problem right in here. I'm going to be fine up in this area. This is where a Gilbert caliper is a handy tool that you can put it down on something like this and tell the diameter. I'm well over two inches and I only need an inch and three quarters. But what I'm going to do at this point is actually swap this end for end, make this the foot of the leg and this the top, which is quite a bit smaller. So I'll handily get my leg out of this billet. This would be about where turners using hand-powered equipment would have started turning. They would have brought it up to something like this with a draw knife. I'm using my hands to steady this work and kill vibration a little bit. By holding on to this, I can make this whole process better. Now, the Windsor Chairmakers made a tapered tenon here that fit into a reamed hole in the seat. So they would take a block of wood like this and run their tapered reamer in here after they drilled a stepped hole through it. And they use this now as a go gauge. And all I have to do is make that drop down in there and I've got this done. And there I go. There's our finished spindle. We did it faster than we could have done it in dry wood because this wood cuts so easily. We've got a pretty decent surface finish to all of this. I could refine some of this with my skew chisel, especially if I sharpened it a little bit. Sharp tools are critical to turning green wood. But you end up with a spindle that's just as good as a dry one, it will warp just a little bit because of the difference in the tangential and the radial shrinkage rates. But there's chairs around for centuries with greenwood turnings in them, and they've done fine. You can do the same. The cost of materials is great. Give greenwood spindle turning a try. Thanks for visiting me.